All right, here we are in a warm Texas afternoon, early afternoon, right about lunchtime. Andes, Texas, handling several cars in a collection. This gentleman has a lot of different cars in his collection. He likes to enjoy every one of them. Uh, this particular car he has a lot of fun with. He has a lot of super high-end show cars, that kind of thing. But every now and then you got to have a car that you can just drive and have fun with. Uniquely rare, in fact I should say very rare, 1951 Hudson Hornet H145 convertible. Approximately, according to the specs that I have, there are about 500 of these built, 5, 550 in that range. You don't see many of these cars, so consequently, when he takes this down or drives it around to the boulevard or whatever, people just go crazy and come in crowds because, well, movie the cars, that kind of thing, but also they're just super rare. Um, beautiful car in it in its presence because of the styling i mean these particular cars did very well in Na in nascar because of the uh the way they sat low on the chassis and the body um again this is the kind of car that would be considered much like a driver um, we could pick it apart for quite a few things but running and driving and its overall presence is just cool um, and it's definitely uh, a fun car walk up front here we're going to share quite a bit it has twin h horsepower underneath the hood h145 signification I believe was a uh, 145 horsepower uh, it's got the h145 wasp emblems on the uh, door panels i don't know if they were called wasp but uh, a little warm a little rummy been doing some cars this morning the wind's picking up on me here making sure my speaker's connected there um, Resting on a quite an older amateur style restoration. The paint is good uh, driver quality like we talked about. Um, you'll see show cars in the background here, but this is you know one of those cars where you just twist the key and go have some fun. Uh, Hornet emblems, looks like all the trim is on it like it's supposed to be. It's got slight age, patina character, that kind of thing. The Hudson emblem on the front here. Mascot on the hood. He did put a new convertible top on it when he purchased it. So it's got a new convertible top. This car is pretty well optioned. I don't know if they were that way factory or not. Again, I'm not the expert on Hudson's. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I say something wrong. Has a flip up antenna there. Uh, whether you turn it from the inside. Has a power convertible top. The gentleman did put a new convertible top on it. Again, you could pick it for uh, uh, the paint just Good looking paint from a from a short distance. A little flaws here and there. A little lift there that's been touched up. You know, it's uh, just prep the kind of car you can drive. It's not uh, not going to win any best of paint show awards, but it looks good from a very short distance. Anyway, the dash is all beautiful. I don't know if this upholstery is an original style or not. Again, I could not tell you. Um, it's got a lizard skin inserts, vertical pleats on it. A little. Uh, Ox blood style upholstery on the outside. Seven eight three one four three nine. We get to the undercarriage. The undercarriage on this car is is, is weak. It's it's just been restored for driving. Um, it's not a high level restoration, but it's a functional uh, power windows here. It's got an upgraded vintage air conditioning in it, so it's got vintage AC. The power top works. Again, a new. Uh, New convertible soft canvas top on it. Just a fun car. Some of his fav most favorite cars are the ones that you can just kind of putz around in and get lots of attention, and this is one of those cars. A little close to the building here because I was trying to pick up shade, so I'm trying to get as much as I can for you here. Both doors take a little bit of effort to get them to shut, so we're going to go ahead and shut it. We actually will have it up on a lift for you, share the undercarriage with you. Sorry for the parched sun and shade. A little bit of a late start this morning on this one. All the trim's actually very nice on the car and it all looks in place. Here's the, uh, I'm sure fairly rare, hard to find twin, twin H power uh, emblem on the back here. The Hornet on the deck. Too much fun. Car doesn't have to be perfect to have fun with it, and this car is a great looking car. Its style is just incredible. A little quiet there, I'm just kind of sharing it with you. 
taking it all in myself. Get over here on the driver's side here with you. Again, it has kind of a lizard skin insert in it or a alligator look. I don't know if it's lizard or alligator or um, that may have been something that they did back in the day. Again, I don't know. The back seat here, share the back seat. Power top, the back of the seat here has a little map pocket in it. All the trims there. I will say, will say one thing about this car, it is all here and as rare as these cars are, uh, makes them special just in and of themselves and that they're still rolling today. Um, really neat all factory chrome bright work on the uh, steering column, the hydromatic, it's got the uh, 308 cubic inch uh, engine in it, we'll cover it in just a minute, we'll actually run it underneath the hood for you too. Factory radio, push button radio, it has the uh, upgraded or somebody added vintage air to it, which is functional. Uh, lower gauges down here. We'll go over the gauges with you here with it running. Hudson Hornet on the dash there. A lot of this wood finish and stuff I think is probably original. And then stature, you'll see the door jams here are just a little weak. Um, Anyway, definitely make sure you hang on to the end of the video. I'm going to get out. You'll see the hydro hydro automatic here. Hydromatic. Going to hop out, invite you in, tell you to make sure you hang on to the end of the video. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to me. All right, let's take a look underneath the hood. You got to love old school technology when you get underneath the hood of one of these. Uh, they were definitely the horsepower of the day. Twin H power. Dual carburation here. It is a uh, six-cylinder uh, flathead with a 308 cubic inch. They were rated the H45 signification, which was rated at 145 horsepower H145, um, and uh, I think they produced even more when they had the more horsepower when they had the uh, twin H option on them. Somewhere up to where around 170 horse. I'm just operating off my memory banks here, so uh, we'll have more specs at uh, Spud's Garage, but just kind of cover it for you. We have no idea how this car was originally equipped or anything like that. We do know it's a limited production car. Um, the convertible was. And somebody's added uh, uh, vintage air conditioning on it, which is kind of neat, so you have some AC and a convertible here. Very much an older, much older style restoration on this car. Runs great like a Swiss watch. It's definitely the kind of car you can drive. Um, hang on, we'll get under the undercarriage and all that kind of thing like we usually do it. It's a uh, little weak on the bottom side, but the car runs and drives great. Hydromatic, um, AC, the way they've done it here. They routed the lines back here. Anyway, go to spudsgarage.com. Hang on to the end of the video. Have a great day. All right, we thought we'd give you a quick little video. We just did the engine for you, but we wanted you to hear it run. Uh, smooth, the six bangers had a lot of horsepower for the period. Go to the back, let you hear the exhaust. Definitely make sure you hang on to the end of the video. There you go, hang on to the end of the video. All right, we just took it for a little drive, thought we'd share some of this with you. Going over everything, water temperature gauge is good, oil pressure's reading about uh, 40 pounds. The vintage air's right here, controls. Temp gauge is not connected because there's one down below. Fuel gauge can tell you if it works or not. Uh, speedo works. We took it for a drive. Anyway, we'll take it up here and we'll show you there. Hydromatic. Speedometer's working. That's a neat speedo. Anyway, there you go. Go to spudsgarage.com where you'll find more. We're going to finish up quite a few cars in this collection. Have a great day. All right, let's take a look at the trunk. Matching the interior of the car, it has the red carpet and the spares here, it has the tonneau cover in the back, uh, deck lid, finishes just pretty much like the rest of the car, uh, 
It has a prop rod here because I think the springs are weak in the deck lid there and these deck lids are fairly heavy. There's a lot of chrome on these things. Anyway, there you have it. Hang on to the end of the video for sure. Have a great day. All right, as we mentioned around the walk around, the underside of this is an older restoration, more of an amateur done style. The car attracts a lot of attention. Uh, it is drivable and it drives well actually. But we're gonna share the undercarriage with you, which is, has its weak points. We wanna make sure full disclosure like we always do. Uh, this Jewel's had some uh, repairs. It's not unusual for a convertible to have uh, rust on the floor pans and that type of thing because they often got water. They'd sit outside and the carpets would get wet, that kind of thing. But there are quite a few uh, repairs. And uh, you know, you wanna call it driver quality at somewhat because it is very much drivable. Uh, we're, but we're not trying to make excuses. Um, it's had mastic, if you look up here in the rear, where they've done some metal replacement and done uh, amateur type repairs here. Factory rear differential, brakes are all good, works fine. Has this, uh, what I'm told is a rare split exhaust on it, split Y-pipe. This side's a little bit uh, better as far as repairs, but you know, it's not that the uh, structure of it is uh, not usual the way it is. Again, the kind of car you can uh, definitely drive, but it would require, it's the kind of car that's probably not, you look up in here, it would cost a lot of dough to uh, replace these components and really it's not going to rust much anymore. It's not on the road every day. You get crowds around this car. And I don't know how many people are going to get on their hands and knees and look underneath at her and they're not going to see the stuff that I'm looking at. Repair there. The rockshire, the uh, chassis itself, uh, I think the convertible they reinforced areas anyway with the factory steel plate. Um, has uh, rocker repairs along here. They put steel pieces in there and then welded it in. I'm trying to get the light right there. Little repair on the floor pan here. Little repair. <laughs> There's a spot here that's a repair. There's a spot there that's a repair. This rear section's been repaired here. Looks like maybe a manufactured piece. Reproduction is what I meant to say. Um, overall, like I said, this is the kind of car the guy drives and enjoys. It's part of a collection he, he didn't know uh, the floor pans are like this when he bought the car because it looks so good at a show. Uh, you see the, the mast, there's mastic used in places which is like a roof tar is what I would call it. But again, um, fully functional suspension driving car. Some time was spent on restoring suspension components and brakes and that kind of thing. Uh, prior the automatic transmission here is a hydromatic is what that is again the split exhaust Y pipe it's Bud's garage we love coming having you come to Bud's garage not every car can be a hundred percent perfect but uh, what we find we disclose part of a large collection here of several cars and many high-end cars. Rare cars too. Anyway, we think you get the idea. The sun's peeking at us there. Um, go to spudsgarage.com where I'll have plenty of still photos. We appreciate you coming and listening to me. There you go. If you're looking for a great looking Hudson Hornet that you can drive, this old girl will do it at a fraction of what a uh, super high-end restoration would be. There you go.